Welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing composition series and the jordan holder theorem. Okay, so we've now defined uh, what a composition series for a group is. We've seen uh, that all finite groups will have a composition series. What we're now going to do is study the jordan holder theorem. Okay, so I'll firstly just put a little title here and then I'll actually state the jordan holder theorem for you and then of course we will prove it. Okay, so the Jordan Holder Theorem has two parts to it. Part one we've actually already done because part one is uh, just the statement that if you're working with a finite group, then it will have a composition series. A composition series for that finite group will exist. Okay, uh, so I've just put part one here uh, is the existence of composition series for finite groups. So I've just put existence. Okay, so we've already done the part one of the Jordan Holder Theorem. So we're now going to move on to part two of the Jordan Holder Theorem. And I should stress that the Jordan Holder Theorem is completely about composition series for finite groups, not for infinite groups. Okay, so part one of the Jordan Holder Theorem states that for finite groups, a composition series will exist. Part two is the part that we're going to be more interested in now. Part two concerns what if you can find more than one composition series for a finite group. Can we say that there's any sort of correspondence between those two composition series? Okay, so let's say we do have uh, two different composition series for our finite group. So I'll write these out here. So here is the trivial subgroup, and then let's say the first one can involve the symbols G's here. Okay, so we'll have G0 representing the trivial subgroup. It will be a proper normal subgroup of G1. Uh, which will be a proper normal subgroup of G2, and then it will go on like so, all the way up to, let's say, GK minus 1, and then up to GK, uh, which will be another name for the improper subgroup equal to G. So here is one composition series for our finite group, capital G, and let's now say that there is another composition series, and remember the reason that there can exist more than one composition series is that there is not necessarily just one maximal normal subgroup inside your finite group, capital G. There might be lots of maximal normal subgroups, and with those different ones you can develop different composition series. Okay, so let's say we've got another one here, which I'll write down below, uh, and we'll have this one notated in H's. So we'll have H0 representing the trivial subgroup, and it will be a normal subgroup inside of H1, which will be a normal subgroup inside of H2, and then it will go on all the way up to, let's say, HL. So we'll have HL minus 1, and then all the way up to HL here, which will be equal to our improper subgroup, i.e. it will be equal to all of G. So here I have got two arbitrary composition series for my finite group capital G. Part 2 of the Jordan Holder theorem says that there is a lot of similarities between these two. Even though they might be different composition series, there is a correspondence between them. Firstly, the lengths of these composition series will equal one another. So L will be equal to K is the first thing you can conclude. Secondly, there is a correspondence between the composition factors. Okay, so I'll just write that the composition factors correspond. So what I mean by that is that if you were to write a list of the composition factors that you'd get from here, so you were to take gk and quotient it out by gk minus 1, you were to take gk minus 1 and quotient it out by gk minus 2, you were to create all k of the composition factors here, and you were to do the same here, create all L of the composition factors here, and of course, because we've already asserted that the lengths will be the same, we'll end up with the same number of cross, uh, composition factors. So you end up with two lists of composition factors that are the same lengths. I claim that those lists will contain the same groups, okay? Um, they might be in different orders. Indeed, if these are two separate composition series, they probably will be in different orders. Uh, however, you will be able to rearrange one of the lists to turn it into the other list. Okay, so all of the actual composition factors do correspond to the composition factors here. Okay, so you can truly think of a group as being built out of a certain fixed um, set of composition factors. 
Okay, right. So that's why we can think of finite groups as being built out of finite simple groups. Although, as I've shown you, you can have different groups that have the same list of composition factors as uh, we had up here. So the symmetric group on the set of three elements, its list of composition factors was the cyclic group on the set of two elements and the cyclic group on the set of three elements. And so was the cyclic group on the set of six elements, the list of composition factors. Okay, so although these two groups were, of course, different groups, they're not isomorphic to one another, their list of composition factors is the same. Okay, so having a list of composition factors does not allow you to instantly conclude uh, which group you are dealing with. Okay, although, as I say, every single finite group does have one well-defined list of composition factors from which you can, in a sense, think of it as being built out of. Okay, so, here then is the Jordan-Holder theorem, part one and part two. We've already discussed and proved part one, so we're now going to dedicate ourselves to proving part two. Okay, so, we're going to do this by a proof by induction then, and proof by induction on the order of the group that you're working with. Okay, so I'll put the proof here. So, what we're going to do then is we're going to start off by uh, seeing that the theorem is true for a group of order 1. We'll then assume that it's true for any group of order less than uh, a certain value, and then we'll prove that you can then prove that it's true for a group of the next order up. Okay, and then we will, have been, we will be able to conclude that it's true for groups of order 2, since it's true for groups of order 1. We'll be able to prove that it's true for groups of order 3, since it's true for groups of order 1 and 2, etc. And you are proving that it's true uh, for all uh, groups of any order, uh, finite order. Okay, right, so let's start off with some group then of order 1 and prove that part 2 of the Jordan-Holder theorem is true for groups of order 1. Okay, so if you've got a group of order 1, then we know what this group looks like. It is a really trivial group that just contains a single element, and the composition law is really trivial. Uh, it just composes with itself to give itself. What else can it give? Okay, uh, so it's called the trivial group. Now, the only composition series that you can devise for the trivial group looks like this. Uh, it will contain one subgroup, which will be the trivial subgroup and also the improper subgroup. Okay, so it'll look like this, and it'll have length zero, therefore. Okay, now, it only has one composition series, therefore, it is trivially true that the length of the composition series that it has are always going to be the same, and that the composition factors are always going to correspond. Indeed, there are no composition factors in this case, so they do correspond. Okay, so it is true for groups of order one, really trivially. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to have the inductive assumption. So we're going to assume that the part two of the Jordan-Holder theorem is true for groups of order strictly less than some m here. So we'll assume that the part two of the Jordan-Holder theorem is true for any group of order less than little n, where little n is just some natural number. Okay, uh, so if you've got a group of order less than n, then you can instantly conclude that if you have two composition series of uh, that for that group, uh, of order less than n, uh, that they will have the same length and that their composition factors will correspond. Okay, and now of course what we need to do is we need to prove that it's true for the next one along. So we need to prove that it's true for a group that has order equal to little n. And then once we've done this, because it's true for 1, it will then be true for 2. Because it's true for 1 and 2, it will then be true for 3. Because it's true for 1, 2 and 3, it will then be true for 4. And it just goes on and on and on. And we've proven that it's true for all natural numbers. Okay, right. So all we now need to do then is prove that it's going to be true for this group of order n using our inductive assumption here. Okay, so the first case, the first scenario that we need to... Uh, deal with, and which we can deal with very quickly, is what if this group is simple? Okay, so the first scenario is that this group of order n actually is a simple group. Okay, now simple groups have incredibly simple composition series uh, because, of course, they have only two normal subgroups. They have the trivial subgroup and the improper subgroup. 
So their ma only maximal normal subgroup is going to be the trivial subgroup. And therefore, if G is a simple group, then its composition series is going to look like this. You'll have the trivial subgroup here, which we'll call G0, and that will then be the only normal subgroup inside of the improper subgroup, which we'll call G1. Okay, so any simple a group is going to have a composition series, a single composition series that looks like this. And indeed, this will be a composition series because when we quotient G1 out by G0, take this composition factor here, we will get something that's isomorphic to G1. And of course, G1 is a simple group. Therefore, it will satisfy the condition that all of these quotient groups of the subnormal series are indeed uh, simple groups. Okay, so... Uh, this is the only composition series, then, that you can build for a simple group. Um, what else can you build? Because, as I say, there's only one maximal normal subgroup. You can't find any other normal subgroups in there. Okay, so this is the only composition series that you can build for a simple group, and, of course, it has length here, 1. So it's going to be trivially true, then, uh, for uh, if you've got a group of order n that is a simple group. Okay, because it only has one composition series, so the length will always equal uh, the same, and the composition factors will always correspond if you've got two composition series, because they'll be the same composition series. Okay, right. The other thing to point out is that if you have got a group whose composition with a composition series of length 1, then you can instantly conclude that it is simple, because any composition series of length 1 must just look like this, i.e. it has the trivial subgroup and then the improper subgroup, and that's the, all the only way that this composition series of length 1 can actually look. And of course, if that is a composition series, then it must be true that if you take the improper subgroup and quotient it out by the trivial subgroup, what you get must be a simple group. But that's going to be isomorphic to the improper subgroup, i.e. the entire group, so it would imply that the group is simple. So what my point here is, is that if the group isn't simple, then you can conclude that the length of the composition series is greater than 1. Okay, right. So how are we going with our proof then so far? So we're trying to prove that uh, any group of order n uh, is going to, that this theorem, part 2 of the jordan holder theorem, is going to be true for that. We've so far proven that it will be true if G is simple. Now let's do what if G is not simple, so scenario 2. So we might as well assume from now on that G is not simple. Okay, and what that now means is that if you have a composition series for G, then it is going to have length greater than 1, strictly greater than 1. So the length is not going to be one of any composition series. So you devise any composition series for a non-simple non group, its length must be greater than one. Okay? Now, if that means that if I want to draw pictures for what the composition series that I'm going to have for G are going to look like, they're going to look like what I have up here. Okay? I.e. At the very least, they are going to contain one interesting normal subgroup here, at my GK minus 1 and HL minus 1 here. Okay, they are going to contain a normal subgroup that is not just the trivial subgroup. They're going to contain something to the left of the improper subgroup before you get to the trivial subgroup. So this is the important point, that if G is not simple, these will exist and they will not be the trivial subgroup. Okay, right, and we're going to now base everything on the existence of these. Okay, so what we want to now prove is that if G is not simple, uh, we know therefore that any composition series is going to have length 1, and we've got these two different composition series, we want to prove that it's going to be true that their lengths are going to be the same, and that their composition factors are going to correspond. Okay, so we're now going to split this into two cases. The first is the easier case, and the second is the more difficult case. So we'll start off with the first case, case 1. So... We've got these two composition series for G, okay, and these are the pictures of them here. So here's uh, composition series number one, and I'll just number these up. So let's call this composition series number one, and let's call this one composition series number two. Okay, so the orange one is composition series number one, and the red one is composition series number two. And what we now want to uh, prove is that the length of these is going to be the same, and that the composition factors are going to be corresponding. Okay, right, so case one is the case where these 
two normal subgroups to the left in the composition series of the improper subgroups are actually the same. Okay, so in case one, we are going to assume that GK minus one is actually equal to HL minus one. And then in case two, we will assume that this is not true, that they are different. Okay, so let me just explain this in a little bit more detail. So we've got these two composition series for our group capital G. So GK and HL are the same thing. They are just different names for the improper subgroup capital G. We've then got these normal subgroups, these maximal normal subgroups inside of uh, G, which are GK minus one and HL minus one. Okay, so the two options, and we know that these are not the trivial subgroup because we're now assuming that G is not simple, okay? Um, the two options are that these can either be equal to one another, they're the same uh, maximal normal subgroup that you have in these two composition series, or the more difficult scenario is that they're actually different maximal normal subgroups, and we'll have to take that on later on. We're now doing the case where these are the same maximal normal subgroup, and we now want to prove that if those two are going to be the same, then the entire composition series uh, are going to have the same length and are going to have uh, corresponding composition factors, i.e. part two of the jordan holder theorem will hold. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Well, it's quite simple. We can use the inductive assumption. Okay, so if these two are now the same, so we're assuming that these two here are the same, we might as well just get rid of this bit. And now look, I've got a composition series uh, for this group, think of it as a group in its own right, gk minus 1 now, and here is another composition series for that same group, because I'm assuming hl minus 1 and gk minus 1 here are the same group, okay? So I've got two composition series here for this group, and this group has order less than the order of the original group, therefore by the inductive assumption part 2 of the jordan holder theorem is going to hold for this group i.e. the length of these two composition series that I have for this group are going to be the same. So k minus 1 is going to equal l minus 1, and that of course instantly implies that the length of these overall composition series for g are going to be the same. So k is going to be equal to l. Okay, so I've now managed to conclude that the lengths are the same. In addition, it's going to be the case that the composition factors for this composition series for gk minus 1 is the same as the composition factors for this composition series for gk minus 1, i.e. that if I wrote this out in a list and wrote the composition factors for this one out in a list, they might be in different orders, but the actual um, groups that you've got in that list would correspond perfectly. Okay, now does that mean then that the um, composition factors that we're going to have for the entire uh, group capital G are going to correspond perfectly? Well, of course they are, because up to here they're corresponding perfectly, and we're saying that these two are the same maximal normal subgroup, so when you quotient G out by these two subgroups here, you're going to get the exact same thing. So this composition factor here, GK quotiented out by GK minus 1, is of course going to be the same as HL quotiented out by HL minus 1. That's obvious because I've said that these two subgroups are the same subgroup of G. Okay, so don't get confused by the different notation here that GK and HL, remember, they are the same group. They are just different notations for the improper subgroup, capital G. Okay, and I've now said that these uh, two maximal normal subgroups in the improper subgroup that we've got to the left in these two composition series are the same, so of course when we quotient out by them we'll get the same composition factors. Okay, so if all the lists up to this point do correspond, then if we add these two onto the list, they'll still correspond because this one will correspond to this one. Okay, so indeed we have now proven then that these two composition series 4G, their lengths will be the same and their composition factors will correspond if we have case one is true, uh, we've proven it, i.e. that the first two maximal normal subgroups in those composition series, the ones just to the left of the improper subgroups, are the same maximal normal subgroup, and of course that doesn't have to be true, you could have picked different maximal normal subgroups over there, okay, potentially. So what we're going to have to do in the next video is go to case two, which is where those are not the same, and we're going to have to prove that harder case that uh, the two composition series are still going to have the same length and that their composition factors will correspond.